We begin with the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us, that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
of God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion, that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and the disciples went to Capernaum, and when Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, this week, we hear a story of something coming from an unusual place, making an unusual claim as one with authority. Making a claim that some people even believe applies to the future. Down through history, people from all over have talked about this event and probably take it with different levels of interpretations in terms of its seriousness. This event has been debated and questioned. Many have asked, could this claim, this occurrence, even be true? Does something that is not even human have the ability to make this announcement? What does this, each of us make of this message and proclamation as we hear it again this week? I've got to be honest and say, I'm not sure how much stock I really put into it. I'm not sure I really believe it and really look at it with a great deal of skepticism. Now, you might be thinking I'm referring to our gospel lesson, but rather, instead, I am talking about Groundhog Day. This Friday is Groundhog Day, February 2nd. It is popular tradition in the United States. It's also a legend that traverses centuries. Its origins clouded in the midst of time 
with ethnic cultures and animal awakenings on specific dates. Myths such as this tie our present to the distant past when nature did indeed influence our lives perhaps to a much greater degree. This week is the day the groundhog comes out of his hole after a long winter's sleep to look for his shadow. If he sees it, he regards it as an omen of six more weeks of bad weather and returns to his hole. If the day is cloudy and hence shadowless, he takes it as a sign of spring and stays above ground. That part always seemed confusing to me as one would think if the sun was out, that would be a good sign for spring. The reality is most of us today probably don't put a whole lot of stock in the groundhog. We probably don't give the animal a whole lot of authority in making weather claims. However, the bigger question can be and can become, where then do we look for authority in our lives? Not just for weather, but for the more important issues of life. Do we ever look to the wider church? Do we look to the President of the United States? Do we look to the Supreme Court? Do we look at the United Nations? Do we look to our military leaders? Do we look at our institutions of higher learning? Where do we look for authority? How does our belief about the scriptures and our faith direct the focus of where we look for authority in our lives? In today's gospel, it is easy to get caught up in the story of the man with the unclean spirit. However, if we do, we really miss the greater point. Notice in the passage that before the man even enters into the scene, the text says of the people gathered there to hear Jesus' own message, they say, it reads, they were astounded at his teaching. He taught them with one having authority. Then this whole other thing happens with the unclean spirit. Today's text is one of recognizing authority. The whole Epiphany season is about the birth of Christ and Christ's purpose is being brought into the light. Today's text demonstrates that this Jesus is going to demonstrate something new. This Jesus teaches the commands with such authority that the people are astounded and even forces that are not human are subjected to him. Again, though the people are certainly impressed that this unclean spirit is removed, they are more amazed because of Jesus' authority. In Christ, through his life and word, we have ultimate authority. We live in a world of words. Words are all about us. Words on TV, words on the radio, spoken words by family and friends, words printed in newspapers, books, words we hear on podcasts, words on computers, words on the internet. The world of words has turned us into a people who have been overwhelmed, suffocated, and buried in the mounting pile of words. With so many words around us, words can lose their meaning. They can become important and no longer have any real value or influence in this life. The result becomes we don't know who to believe. This year, being a presidential year, one clouded with all kinds of in seeping of issues, that it's hard to know where to look for truth. Which network is right? What does propaganda news look like? What are our litmus tests for determining authenticity, truth, genuineness, and authority. In our sensitivity for those outside the Christian faith, we are left to struggle at what point we overtly display how Christ's authority in our lives affects our choices and direction. The question of authority is one that we cannot escape. It is not an easy one to apply to our lives either. I haven't lived in other generations to make a direct and personal comparison but it seems in our lifetimes, 
what can be lifted up as truth, as deception, is at an all-time high. I do not think that humans are more evil than before, but I think technology has allowed the flat earthers of the world to have more influence and a mirage of authority that was ever possible in human history before. A lie can be repeated in all kinds of ways today that reaches so many people that many begin to think that lie is true. I think the world today has been trying to figure all this out with the corruption of the heart and mind, seemingly always one step ahead of our ability to decipher things with truth and right intention. I think this whole issue has been one we've been really trying to figure out with social media, for example. And now comes AI, the gift of being able to do all kinds of new and amazing things. But already, we are seeing the dark side of such technology. When a recognized authority figure can be modified with even words showing come out of that person's their own mouth by technology, it raises all kinds of flags. How does Christ's authority make a difference in the decisions you will make at your job tomorrow? How does Christ's authority make a difference in how we talk to our children today? How does Christ's authority make a difference in how we file our income taxes? How does Christ's authority make a difference in how we handle all of our finances? All our relationships, all our daily decisions. It is not easy. The challenge for us as Christians is to know Christ and make Christ known, to study Christ and take risk to learn, grow, and mature in the faith. Living the challenge of the Christian life is not just a matter of sometimes taking a peek out of our holes to see which way the sun is shining on a particular day or a particular issue. Instead, it is about a lifelong work of continuing to integrate God's intention for our lives, our lives of discipleship, as we continue on this faith journey. God's word through Christ has authority, power, and hope for living. That authoritative word of Jesus is a word of liberation, a word of comfort, a word of release, a word of pardon, and a word of challenge. It ultimately is about God's great grace and sharing that grace. There is hopefulness as we hear and become empowered by Jesus' words. Because Jesus has authority, because he has power, because his words do affect our lives, then we are a people who can and do live with hope. Hope that things can be changed. Hope that things can be different. Hope that things can be better. That things, lives, and people may be made whole through the authority and power of Christ. May we take the challenge to bring forth his authority and power in our everyday life. Amen.
let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Loving God, we pray that your example of teaching with confidence and authority builds up your church in love. May all church leaders and teachers honor your instruction and model your inclusive ways. God of grace, receive our prayer. Renewing God, we pray for all creation, that waterways flow clean and clear, that our planet may be healed. God of grace, receive our prayer. Justice-seeking God, we pray for those in government and community leadership, that they lead with honor and mindfulness. May we remember those in places suffering from war, like in the Middle East and Ukraine. God of grace, receive our prayer. Compassionate God, we pray for all in need, especially those who know rejection, any who struggle with long-term illness or chronic pain, those without access to safe housing or health care, and any who suffer. God of grace, receive our prayer. Still speaking, God, we pray for our congregation, for its artists and musicians, for its educators and caregivers, that all gifts are used to care for those in need and to live out your example of accompaniment, gospel witness, and love. God of grace, receive our prayer. Eternal God, remember all who have been teachers, mentors, and companions in the church and in our lives. We trust that all who have died rest in your loving care. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may God who claims you, Christ who names you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you now and always. Amen. Go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.